The third part of the clinical concepts is three-dimensional thinking. If you understand real-time, it's basically a movie, and if you understand grayscale and A-scan, it's basically amplitude. Three-dimensional thinking is a concept that I have found to be the most difficult to teach. It is the ability to look at sections that you're not used to in ophthalmology on a routine basis and paste them back together into your mind into a three-dimensional image, even though you only have two-dimensional cross-sections. I don't know how to get started with this other than with a simple concept of a retinal detachment. So let's begin that way. Let's assume you have a plain retinal detachment, which is total. Almost all of us would know that this is a cone-shaped lesion located inside the eye that extends from the aura serrata to the optic nerve. But I told you before, we're not going to image this in an axial method through the lens. We're going to look at it coronally, at least in the scanning mode. So you have to start asking yourself, if you're going to take a coronal image of a cone, what is that cross-section? What does it look like? It's a good time to stop right here and think about it. And that's what I do all the time. I'm looking at the screen, and I'm constantly thinking, what am I looking at in cross-section? How could I put that into a whole topographical map? Let's begin with something that's symmetrical, like I said, a total retinal detachment, and think of a superior to inferior cut, looking at the inferior portion of the eye, going right through a total retinal detachment. Many of you will have already guessed that a cross-sectional image of a cone would be a circle, and indeed it is. If you tilt the probe forward, the circle will get larger, because you're approaching the area of the aura serrata, the greatest width of the cone. And if you tilt it more towards the optic nerve, you should be seeing the circle get smaller. It should be strongly reflective because retina has a great deal of acoustic impedance mismatch when compared to water, at least when you're perpendicular to it, and less so when you're not. But the object should lead to the optic nerve. So in this very, very simple three-dimensional thinking case, I've tried to relate to you how I go about making a diagnosis with the third of the clinical concepts that being three-dimensional thinking. If all of these concepts aren't used, it is extremely difficult to make a diagnosis. I don't think you can. You need all three. You need real-time, grayscale, with or without simultaneous A-scan, and three-dimensional thinking.